Hindu seers of the ancient times invented a very ingenious method of tying the wedding knot. There is perhaps no other example of creating a bond that goes beyond the mortal life on this earth than with a Hindu man and his wife. According to Hindu scriptures, marriage is a duty. Non-performance renders the individual as incomplete. It is based on the principles of law, sacrifice and service to build a good family and lay a strong foundation for noble society. Even though the Vedic society was considered paternal in the beginning, it soon recognized the esteem of the woman and accorded the highest status to her on par with the man. The wife was called Ardhangini, half-body, or Sahadharmini, partner in spiritual life. In the long voyage of the married life, the Hindu wife becomes her husband's true and honored partner. There is no family occasion, religious ceremony, or a spiritual ritual where she is not a major participant. <clears throat> the parents generally arrange Hindu marriages. Even when the man and woman seek each other directly, the family usually endorses the wedding. Nowadays, the involvement and influence of the parents and elders has been reduced in the choice of selection, especially in the urban sector. Traditionally, the wife comes to live in the husband's home after the marriage, leaving her parents' place. It is also expected that she would adapt to the religious and social customs of her new family. Hindus, therefore, prefer that their daughter be married in their own religion and sect so that they may carry the spiritual disciplines smoothly and guide their children evenly. The Vedas state, United your resolve, united your hearts, may your spirits be the one that you may long together dwell in unity and concord. The dowry system is common in Hindu weddings when the bride's parents offer gifts and money to the bridegroom and his family. Even though the law now bans it, this custom nevertheless still persists in Hindu society. In some cases, it takes an ugly and even tragic toll leading to most shameful instances of suicide and even homicide for the sake of dowry. Fortunately, this horrendous custom is gradually reducing now. A Hindu wedding is a combination of tradition and rituals. It is a ceremony from the Vedic times of more than 4,000 years ago. There are no fixed rules, variations abound. If one wishes, he may have the simplest of marriages. On the other hand, there may be protracted ceremonies, lavish dinners, songs and dances going on for almost a week. Even though the majority of Hindus do not understand the ancient Sanskrit language, the wedding ceremony is always performed in this dialect, even in foreign countries. Nowadays, the presiding priest usually renders a simultaneous translation in English or the local Indian language. The Sanskrit word for marriage is viva, which literally means what supports or carries a man and woman throughout their married life in pursuit of righteousness, the dharma. 
A Hindu wedding is essentially a ceremony of sacred rites and rituals. The most important ritual is the Parikarma Mangal Fira, a ritual that marks the symbolic union of the bridegroom and the bride when they both take four rounds together around the sacred fire. In the first three rounds, the bridegroom leads the bride. The first three rounds signify the three activities of a Hindu life, dharma or religious duty, artha or prosperity, and karma or fulfillment of desires. In the fourth round, the bride leads the bridegroom. The fourth round signifies the last activity of a Hindu life, moksha or salvation. Though the bride leads only in the last round, it is the most vital and sacred activity. Hence, her position becomes elevated. The bridal couple then takes satpadi, seven steps together for the seven boors. Together, we will share in the responsibility of the home Together, we will fill our hearts with strength and courage. Together, we will prosper and share our worldly goods. Together, we will fill our hearts with love, peace, happiness and spiritual values. Together, we will be blessed with loving children. Together, we will attain self-restraint and longevity. Together, we will be the best friends and eternal partners. In the seventh and the last step, the bridal couple points towards the star. The star is the virtuous Arundhati, who was never separated from her husband, Rishi Vashistha. Hindu scriptures implore that upon every man to love and care for his wife despite any shortcomings. He is forbidden to strike or speak harshly to her or ignore her needs. Traditionally in the Hindu society, the responsibility of providing financially remains with the husband. He is expected to provide not only for the necessities of life but also for many fine things such as good house, decent clothes, jewelry and many other things to make her feel comfortable and secure. The wife in return is expected to extend full cooperation and support to her husband and take care of the family and children. She is expected to present her husband with a serene corner where he can return after a day's work and find the peace and joy of the household. A wife in the Hindu culture is expected to play her role with modesty and humility. She must let the husband be in the forefront and accept his final decision as the head of the family. Dominant and aggressive women are not regarded highly in Hindu society. <clears throat> Hindu theology regards the ideal marriage as a spiritual journey where the man and woman must complement and help one another towards divine realization. The path is often long and arduous. The spiritual awakening comes through many experiences on the physical plane. <clears throat> 